So the next patch, version 1.1.1G, is in public beta now on Steam, and it has three new things. First, you can now move from one Yellowstone map to another in multiplayer games. Works basically the same as in single player, you run up to the border, and uh, you get the alert, you want to move, and it uses the standard host decides and majority rules decision making process. As in single player, if you've got pups, you won't be able to move, but other times of the year, you can. The second thing, in the dev blog a few weeks ago, I talked about how uh, research in Yellowstone has shown that females are more likely to stay with their family pack and males are more likely to disperse. We've applied that now in the game. So now there are courtable males and females amongst both the dispersals and in rival packs. But there are more females in rival packs and more males amongst the dispersals. Now, we don't want finding an eligible courtable wolf to be a huge laborious effort. And so we've added a neat little thing here. If you uh, howl and uh, wolves within a few kilometers howl back in response, now any of those which are eligible, which means they are the opposite sex as your wolf, and they are interested in courtship, a little heart will appear by their uh, howl icon on the compass. So you can uh, see who's around, who's interested, and head towards them. And then when you get close to one, you find their scent trail. If they're interested in courtship, a uh, little heart outline appears on the scent readout. So we think this will be a nice little aid in general, and it's, you know, it's reasonably plausible. There's certainly information in wolf scents that wolves understand about this sort of thing. And even howls have a lot of information in them that as humans we don't understand. So we think this will be a nice little aid in general, and particularly now with this difference in dispersing rates by male and female wolves. Third new thing, now for years we've had these things called NPC coats, which you can't choose, they don't even appear in the wolf customization uh, coats panel, but you can find rival wolves with them, you can find dispersal with them, sometimes pups grow up and have one of these coats, but the coat is only on those specific wolves. Well, we decided to change that. And now, if you have a pup who grows up and has one of those coats, that unlocks that coat in the wolf customization, and it is available for you to use on any of your wolves at that point. So uh, we think this will be popular. We do have some cheat prevention <laughs> stuff in here, so you can't just unlock a coat and then share a wolf with that around. So you have to start a new game in the beta or in the patch once it's released next week and play through from establishing a territory through raising the pups through summertime and after you've reached endless summer and the family tree snapshot is generated, then the coat is unlocked in the wolf customization. It's not retroactively applied to existing pups and you can't just unlock it on a wolf and then share that wolf save around to give it with other people. It's tied to your computer while you're in that process from established territory through endless summer. And then once you've unlocked it, it's tied to that computer. And if you have a WolfQuest account, then it's registered with that account. So you have it unlocked whenever you log into your account on if you switch computers or something. So there we go. These are the three new things in this version 1.1.1G, plus some other fixes and some other smaller improvements. It's in public beta on Steam now for Mac and Windows. And uh, we expect this to get out to the general patch release next week.